strong, getting stronger every day. Yes. I'm going to prophesy. I believe this is going to be one of the first miracles that will be. It's the start of more to come. Yes. This healing is going to take place at such a supernatural rate. It will amaze and confound not only the doctors and the nurses, but all who are looking and who are watching the progress of this take place. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Well, yeah, we're, we're packing, we're moving, we're getting things together and getting ready for where it is that God is bringing us to. Uh, this morning, I'm going to take the text. It's going to be from Matthew 7, 7. And it's Jesus speaking, and he says to us three things. He says, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. That's all we've got to do is ask, seek, and knock. Now, that seems pretty simple, doesn't it? God has a plan for each and every one of us in this room. And we all know that. We all know that. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, uh, it tells us so. He's got plans for us, for our future, planned thoughts, great thoughts toward us, for a future and a hope to bring us to an expected end. We all have specific assignments that he's got for us in this particular place and time. You are not born out of your season. You are not born out of your time. But God has placed you here for this time, for this season. He's got things for you to accomplish and all he needs you to do is say, what is it, Lord? Get all in and say, what is it, Lord? What is it that you And when he, to see if that's where he needs you to be, to see if that's what he's got for you. All of us have assignments, and uh, many times it's not just one. You know, like going through school. We start off in kindergarten. And we accomplish that assignment, and guess what? We get the assignment of first grade, don't we? So it's like, and, and here's the thing, it's not just an assignment. It's like the assignment of kindergarten laid the foundation so that you could be able to handle the assignment of first grade, which laid the foundation so you could handle the next assignment. That's what it's like. What God has for us, His plans for us are great. They are great. So in inquiring of him, Lord, what is it? What is it you have me to do? You ask. Now, many times what follows that up, because we're human, we're in our mind, okay, so we ask, and, and he gives us something, and he gives us a word, or he gives us a, a, the, the scripture in the, in the word that says this is where you're to go, this is what you're doing. And what's the next thing we do in our human understanding? Well, or we say, How? How can that ever be? How could I ever get there like this? How could that, that, that? And then all of a sudden, your mind just starts working overtime. Oh, well, let's see. I guess if I, if I did a little this, if I did a little that, if I, I went through that door, if I went and did this, if I talked to that person, and boy, all of a sudden, you're trying to figure everything out. Do you know that that's not your part to do? The how is not important. It's just about the why, why he's calling you to the place that he's calling you to. It doesn't matter how he does a thing, just as long as you get there. Amen? Amen. He knows how. Uh, even in this, uh, my husband and I, we've been, we know that God is calling us to Idaho. There's a work for us to do there. I don't know exactly what it looks like. I just know that we're called to be there. We're a team, and he's called us to team something there for him. So, you know, we've, we've went back there three different trips. We've met with a, a, a realtor and, and seen what properties were available. Man, I've, I've spent countless hours online looking at what's for sale, what comes up. I've been on Zillow. I've been on all the different, you know, things. So after our, this past January was our third trip of really earnestly looking and so here I am, you know, we're here with our realtor, we're trying things, and uh, my husband and I go back to the hotel room, we decide to go to Cracker Barrel for dinner. So we walk into the Cracker Barrel, and, and the waitress there, her name, is, her name was Anna, I have a young daughter named Anna, and so she, sweet gal, sweet little face, and she says, so, 
what are you guys doing here in Idaho? You're visiting, huh? What are you doing? And my husband says, oh, we're, you know, looking for a house. And she goes, oh, uh, well, you know, my stepdad, he's not ready to sell just yet, but he's got a place he's going to sell, so there's no realtor involved. And, uh, and we said, well, we're not ready to buy just yet, but we're, we're here to, you know, do something about it. And so, long story short, we got the guy's name, we went to see the house, we walked in the door and go, this is the house. <laughs> Didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. Didn't even come together the way I thought it was going to happen at all. I was due a big, large chunk of money January 1st, and I am still looking for it. It hasn't arrived just yet, but it don't have a choice. It has to come. I needed that in order for us to move forward to even purchase this house. So there was a court proceeding in order to make all that come together. So we went to court, and uh, it didn't go down the way I thought it was going to go down at all. So I got back at home, and have you ever been to a place where you know that God has called you to do something? He always provides for the vision that he's calling you to do, but you get to a place where it's like you feel hopeless. How do you go forward? How do you move forward? So that's where I was. I felt we we got right up until uh, April 1st, Easter Sunday, And man, I mean, I just, I felt like, Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how this is going to come together. And I was in the, and usually when the Father talks to me, it's when I least expect it. It's not while I'm in my prayer time in my closet, you know. It's it's when I'm doing laundry or putting on my makeup. And, And he spoke to me and he said, do you trust me still? You know, sometimes that darkest hour that's just before dawn, when you think all hope is gone, don't give up. Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it. I just know you are going to do it because you who have called me is faithful who also will do it. That's his promise. That's who he is. Amen? All I have to do is keep trusting him and keep walking this thing out. Now look, nothing's going to happen as long as I sit on my couch and go, oh, I know God's got this. He's told me this is what's going to happen, and I'm just, I don't know how he's going to do it, but I just, no, there is something for me to do. We have to get off the couch and do what it is to walk this thing out. Man, do everything that's within your power to get the ball moving, to get going in that direction. There's things and there's steps that we we have to go through to uh, get to that place where he wants us to be. Now, we all know this, that as God has a plan for our life, many times those plans try to get derailed, don't they? There are obstacles and there are things that come. But we know this, God chose us for his plans that he has for us. And when did he choose us? Before the foundations of the world were laid. He chose us in him. And he chose us to be victorious in this life. That's God's plan for everyone in this room. That is his plan for every one of his children, is for them to be victorious in the plans that he has set before us to do. Now, to be victorious, when we're victorious in that, it gives him glory. That's what gives, that's what makes him go, that's my kid, man, because we trusted him and we pushed through till we got to the victory. Amen? But you know, just that word alone, victory, means there's going to be some sort of battle. (laughs) There might even be an all-out war. But you know what? All you've got to do is walk this thing out because the Holy Spirit, as we allow Him to lead us and direct us and guide us, Jesus already went before you. He already paid for your victory when He hung on that cross. He already paid for everything it's going to take for you to get through to the other side of this victory. Hallelujah. And as he even hung on that cross, and then he went and finished the work when he stole the gate, the, the, he went to hell and stole the, key, the keys. 
of, of death, hell, and the grave. And he gave them to you. You know what that is? He just gave you the trophy. And he said, here, I did it. You've already won. Here's the trophy to prove it. And so many times when we get going on this path that God has for us, and there's these obstacles that come in, or these, there's these things, these hope deferred that makes the heart sick, that you, you keep going, where is the promise? Where is this that's coming? Keep walking it out. Keep taking your place in Him. And when the enemy rears his ugly head, you get that trophy off the mantle. This is well, the Word of God is our trophy. And you hold up that Word of God and you say, Here's my trophy. I've already won. Amen? I've already won because of what Jesus has done for me. And I take my place in that victory. He has a victory. He has a job for each of us to do. Say this with me. His plan is my victory. Hallelujah. We've got eight steps. I'm a step person. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way my brain <laughs> functions. Uh, but these are the eight, eight steps to walking out to get to the victory, to get to the other side of the gate, Trevor. I love that. What's on the other side of the gate? Amen. Amen. It's our victory. Amen. Step one always starts with salvation, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Confess, believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you shall be saved. You see, the only prayer God hears is that one first. So many times I come across friends that, yeah, I believe in God, but they've never made a commitment to God. And they say, you know, I pray about this, I pray about that. God don't hear your prayers until you come into alignment with Him and you receive Him. Now, it is... One thing to take Him as Savior, it is another to make Him Lord. Many of us know Him as Savior, but we've never allowed Him to be Lord. And we have to let Him take that place in our life. Many times I, I just pray, Lord, I thank You, I make You. Jesus, I take You as Lord today over my finances, over my health, over the lives of my children, over the plans that You have for me. Father, I thank You that You are Lord of it all. Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. Second step, once we make Him Lord, we have to renew our minds. Romans 12 and 2. Uh, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may do what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and will of God. That's why we have to renew our minds. You know, we're born into this world and we have, there's this mindset, a world mindset that has to change when we come to Christ and receive Him as Savior. That's why we've got to renew our mind to think His thoughts, to be like Him. Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above and not on things of earth. I have to continually, continually, how often? All the time. All the time. Every day, put the Word of God before my eyes. I think one of my favorite passages of Scripture is that Proverbs 4.20 that says, My son, attend to my word. Incline your ear to my saying. Keep them, in them before your eyes and in the midst of your heart. Don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left, but keep your eyelids looking straight before you. Amen? Keep a singleness of mind. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I say that, Father, I take the mind of Christ today that I may think about this the way you think about this. I align my will with your will. I align my words with your words. I align my walk with your walk today. Our victory is imminent. Your victory is sure, but it's a walk that we all have to do to get to the other side of where that victory is. Amen? Oh, there's a saying that says that the Word of God is our roadmap to get to where it is where we need to go. It's the one that gives us direction and shows us even how to get there. And there's a saying that says, uh, if you don't know where you're going, any old road will get you there. 
But when we know where we're going and the plans that he has for us, we just walk this thing out. Step number three is put your blinders on. Back to singleness of mind. My uh, grandfather had a, a mule team. He plowed with the mules. He uh, pulled a wagon with the mules. And on the harnesses of the mules, they have these little blinders. And they're just little leather patches so that the, the animals, are they have singleness of mind. They're, they know where they're going. They're looking straight ahead. They're not looking to the right or to the left or all these little distractions that happen. Now, I've also been just on a horse riding that didn't have blinders on. And I mean, any little old dog that winds, you know, comes bark, or anything, any rattlement, anything. And boy, it just gets them jumpy. How many times do we get jumpy when the enemy's on the side road going, hey, look over here, look over here, look over here. There's distractions that try to pop up all the time. So we've got to keep our blinders on and keep our mind renewed to the Word of God and the plan and the purpose that He has for us and just keep walking this thing out with our blinders on. Uh, Also, uh, uh, the passage of Scripture that says, you know, don't be like a, a, a boat that's tossed on the waves because uh, uh, doubleness of mind. You know, a man it, uh, is unstable in all of his ways. Those that, you know, don't keep, yes. Got to keep, keep the main thing, the main thing. My father always says this to me. He says, steady as she goes. There are times we go through life when, man, it seems like those waves are crashing so hard that your boat is taking on more water than you can possibly bail out. But the Father says, steady as she goes. Keep going. I've got your victory. It's set ahead of you. Just keep moving. Keep walking this thing out. Do you still trust me? Do you believe that I have a plan for your life? Then act like it. Keep walking it out. Keep trusting me. Keep moving forward and keeping our minds renewed to the Word of God. Step number four, guard your heart. Guard your heart and your thoughts. Take those thoughts captive. Because I want you to know, when there's a mission... A purpose that we're moving forth with, distractions are going to come. And we have to guard against those distractions. That's why we keep our blinders on. You know what else uh, besides that's also a distraction is sometimes false responsibility. As mothers, so many times we get wrapped up in, well... You know, what am I supposed to do? What should I do? What, blah, 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 blah. Oh, this isn't being done. So you jump in and you take care of that and you try to take care of that and you wind up ragged because you took on too many responsibilities that you weren't necessarily called to do those things. And so we get divided. And he don't want us divided. He wants us purposed before him and saying, Father, help me with this. I'm going to trust to you. I'm not going to lean on my understanding, but I'm going to follow you. I'm going to trust you with my whole heart. Understand that the enemy does not want you to fulfill your assignment at all. And as we're on the main road and we're walking down this main road, there are side roads that pop up all the time. There are frontage roads to your freeway constantly. And there are little distractions over there going, look over here, look over here, come over here. Why don't you take this road? Maybe it'll get you there quicker. It'll never get you there quicker. Your victory is never on a side road, ever. It is only on the main highway of what God has got for you. Amen? Amen. The enemy will try to stop you any way he can. But you just remind him he's defeated and you get out your trophy and you wave it in his face. My victory is imminent. My victory is certain. Be aware. Number five, nope, we're still on number four. My victory is certain. You know why? Because it is written. It is written. 
Give no place to the enemy or his stupid thoughts. Tell him to flee and he must flee. And you say out loud, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. I cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and I bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Constantly. Because I'm telling you, the battle's in the mind, and there will be constant thoughts that will tell you every way why this is not going to work out, why you are not going to get what God has promised you. Well, maybe you didn't hear from God. Oh, yes, you did. You know you did. You just keep walking this thing out. Sometimes the enemy isn't easy to recognize. Sometimes that voice shows up in the one you love and you trust the most. They go, are you sure you know what you're doing? I know what God has called me and my husband to. I know that he put us together for this next season of what he wants to accomplish through us there in Idaho. I know that. There is no doubt in my mind. But there are all these on the side roads that keep popping up. Good Christian Family members that go, how can you leave all your babies? How can you you leave your dad? How is he going to make it without you? How are they going to make it? What what kind of a woman are you? Do you love your family? That you would just run off and leave them? You know what? I don't live for my family. I love my family. I love my children. I love my babies. But they didn't give me this assignment. They didn't give me the life and the air in my lungs and what it is I have to do and where I have to go. Not even my mama and daddy gave it to me. Oh, they were instrumental, but it didn't come from them. It came from my father. And my singleness of mine is to carry out the plans and purposes that he has for me. I don't work for my kids. I work for him. Amen? I love my babies. I'm there to support them. But I'm telling you, we have to let go of those things. Now, you see, if I were to say, oh, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I haven't really thought this through. I mean, I have all these babies. Maybe I need to... I got number three grandson on the way. <laughs> maybe I need to... You know what that would be like? Is me exalting that above the knowledge of God. See, I can't afford to do that. Anytime anyone says anything to you that's contrary to what the Word of God is or what God has spoken to you, if you listen to it, you are exalting that thing above the knowledge of God. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. We're not on the main road no more, are we? We're not on the fast track anymore. We're on the slow go. The children of Israel, they were on the slow go, weren't they? <laughs> I heard that was a two-week uh, trip that took 40 years. <laughs> I don't want to take 40 years. We ain't got that kind of time. But we have to make the choice. We have to make the decision to move forward in Him in the plans and purposes that He has for us, regardless what's being said. In fact, you should expect negative to arise because the enemy don't want you to receive the victory and give God the glory. Amen. Amen. 2nd Chronicles 20:21 20, says praise always praise always precedes victory. The glory of God is tangible. You can feel it. Many times when I'm in my prayer room and I'm sitting there, I I know the difference when I reached, set my things on, set my mind on things above and not on things of earth, and when I reached that, and His glory comes in, and it becomes so weighty, so heavy. Have you ever taken off on an airplane, and the law of gravity comes in, and it holds you in your seat, and you couldn't lift up your hands if you wanted to? That's like the glory of God. He comes in. That's what we seek after. Lord, I seek you. I need you. I need You're the only one who can get me through what I have to go through. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding of this, but I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to trust you. Hallelujah. 
Praise precedes victory. Keep praising. There are going to be times where, you, where doubt wants to come in. There are going to be times of heaviness. But I'm telling you, if you will just pick up that cloak of praise and you put it on and you begin to praise Him, Lord, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know why it's going to happen and I'm going to trust You and I'm going to stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord in my behalf because He's got the plan. And when He's got the plan, there is nothing better the assignment that he has for me that's what I want to fulfill because I want to give him glory my life belongs to him it no longer belongs to me at all I died to myself and I live in him amen I live in him glory to God glory to God glory to God doubts come but don't you give them no place you guard your heart and mind Isaiah 26, 3, he will give him perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Amen? So we renew our mind to that word. Step number five. Remember, God always begins with the end in mind. He knew revelations before there was a Genesis. Proverbs 6, 23 says, For the commandment, is a lamp and the law a light and reproofs for instructions are the way of life, our perfect road map. What happens when we get our eyes off the map? We get lost. How are we found? Repent. What does repent mean? Turn around. Get back on the main road. Get off the side road. Pick up your map and follow it to the letter. The Word of God is our road map. It is our instruction to move forward, move ahead. And you know what? You can't depend on somebody else's prayers. I thank God we support each other in our prayers. But I can't depend on George's prayers to get me to my victory. I got to have the relationship with the Father myself. I got to ask. I got to seek. I got to knock. I got to be doing the knocking. I have to be doing the reading. Diane can read all of the book of John. But just because she read all the book of John, that's not good enough for me. I've got to read it for myself. I've got to know it for myself. I can't rely on my mama's prayers. I can't rely on my spouse's knowledge of the word. I've got to learn it for myself. Amen? This is our responsibility. It's whose life? God's plan and purpose and assignment, there's a responsibility on my part to do something about it, to grow up in Him. To grow up in Him means to put that word before my eyes every day to take the instruction that He's given me. Number six, don't try to outthink God. <laughs> Tell Him how it's going to happen. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way of death. Be consistent. Constantly renew your mind. Take God's thoughts and humble yourself under the almighty hand of God that He will exalt you in due time. And how you do that is by casting all your care on Him. What's the care? The how? The how? How is this going to happen? What do you care? Give it to Him. Let Him see how He's going to make it all work out. Uh, so, <clears throat> back to my story of moving. Looked like all hope was gone. There's no way I got any resources in me to make this move or this house happen to come together. My I, God has given me an awesome husband. He is a mighty man of God, and He's doing all He can do too to get us to where we're supposed to be. And what was supposed to come through didn't come through. And God is saying, do you trust me still? Do you trust me still? Easter Sunday morning, we came to church. Glorious time. It was great. My heart was still a little heavy. We went home. We wound up visiting with some people later on that afternoon. And God used the avenue He wanted to use to make this miracle happen for us that we are able to move and that we are able to go. His ways are always perfect. His timing is never early, 
but it's never late. Yep, never late. It's always right on the money. Just trust him. He knows what avenues he's going to use and how he's going to bring it to come together. Well, pastor got up here and said, we need to start a building fund and things are going on. I don't know how we can do it. You know, we're, we're giving this much, so much already. And where does he think all this $100,000 is coming from? All he's got to do is call it in and trust God and say the victory is on the other side of that $100,000. And who's going to put a ceiling on $100,000? I prophesy a million dollars to come into this house and to make a way of what needs to happen. It's only money. That's all it is. It's just money. Yesterday morning was, was wonderful having that luncheon, that ladies' luncheon, and all I could think was, why are there empty seats here? It was awesome. Everything was excellent about yesterday for that women's ministry. There should not have been one empty seat. There should have been, oh, uh, I'm so sorry we ran out of seats, but uh, here, you take my seat, take my lunch. Let me serve you today. Are you ready to give up your seat in this church and say, let me serve you today? You keep calling them in and not just calling them in in the spirit, but Holy Spirit, you direct me, you course direct me today of who it is I'm going to come in contact with that I need to invite here. They need to be in the place. Listen, I've been in lots of churches. Someone asked me the other day, well, have you got a home church there in Idaho? No, I do not. We have visited a couple of churches there while we were there on uh, visiting, and uh, that's not where God is placing us in either one of those. There are many churches that are there, but there ain't very many at all that have the move of the Holy Spirit as is in this house. And what it comes from is a pastor who is before the Lord and spending his time there. And he's not listening to outside voices that say, oh, you can't grow a church that way. Oh, that's going to be impossible. You can't get it done that way. No, he listens to the voice of God. And he don't care what you and I think about it. He's going to do what God says to do about it. And that's the way he's going to go. He's a faithful steward, a faithful shepherd of this house. And I'm telling you, that is rare in these days. Do you know how many pastors are dictated to by their board? Their board says, oh no, or the one who gives the most money in the tithe that takes the reins of the pastor. Oh, pastor, I think you should teach on this next Sunday. Oh, pastor, I think that you just go too long. You need to shorten up those sermons. We don't have time for all that. Well, thank God you got a pastor that don't listen to you. He listens to God. And you know what? He ain't alone because she's just as valuable as him. They're one. They're one. They do this as one. Hallelujah. Hold them up in prayer. They are parting the waters to get this church through to the other side of the gate where your victory is, where explosion is going to happen. But you know what? Let me see. Whoo! Victory, that's what's going to happen. Seven. Do our part. Preparedness meets opportunity. There's a part for us to do. If we're preparing for this church to have overflow, then there is a part for us to do. Amen? We got to open our mouth and we got to invite people here. We've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God. There might be someone that you're standing in line uh, next to. You don't even know who this person is. And the Holy Spirit does this. Invite them. Say something. Say hi. Make a conversation. They're hurting. They need, listen, if there is someone, if whoever is outside the church who does not know Jesus as their personal Savior, their life is hell. I don't care how much money they have or how wonderful their life may seem to be. It ain't. Because there is no peace. There is no happiness. There is no fulfillment of life outside of Jesus Christ. None. So it ain't as pretty as it may seem to be. 
So we get ready. We get ready for this plan that He has set before us. Might mean that we need to let go of some stuff. We're preparing to move. Hey, I had to get, I had to get ready for that. Yeah. I've been packed up over a year. Wow. Hi, babe. Because I knew we're leaving. So I'm going to put some action behind what I believe. Yeah. We're moving. And where I'm moving to, I'm not going to need this sectional couch. Yeah. I'm not going to need that washer and dryer. So what do I do? I start selling it today, <laughs> not tomorrow. We're just kind of sitting around on little chairs in the living room. We even stole the television stand. <laughs> it's sitting on something. Else. Who cares? Preparedness meets opportunity. You continue to prepare. You continue to do those things that He's called you to do. Amen? Amen. Look ahead where your victory is. It's kind of like climbing a mountain. Anybody ever climb a mountain? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You're standing at the bottom of a mountain and you look up there and you go, wow, that's a long ways up there, but we're going, so let's just get going. So we get up there, and as soon as you top the knoll of that hill, what do you see? A bigger mountain. Oh, I thought this was the top. This ain't the top? No, baby. This ain't the top. This is the first step. This is the first assignment. You walk this out, and then he'll reveal to you what the next step is. And you know what? It's going to take all you learned to get to the top of that first knoll to get to the top of the second one. It's a constantly building upon building upon building, line upon line, precept upon precept. Amen? Whoo, hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus will open the doors that you're willing to walk through. It's your choice. He don't make you do anything. But I'm going to tell you, your life is going to be miserable if you're out of line or out of step with what He's got for you. Don't get things out of order. Stay in order. Stay in line. That comes to step number eight. Guard your mouth. And the words that come out of your mouth is what you're saying what you want. Do you know how many times I was even tempted to say, well, it doesn't look like it's going to work out. Well, I guess we're not going to get that house. Oh, I think those people might just go ahead and... They listed the house with someone else while we have it in escrow. They wanted a backup offer. Well, I guess it doesn't look like it's going to... No, I have to... Mm, don't confess that. Don't give it a place. Don't give it a space for it to be created and become a thing. You have to guard your words. Is what you're saying what you want? Spouses in here, when your spouse says something, turn and look at them and say, is that how you want it to be? Because you're one, see? And what one is believing for, a house divided itself can't do what? It can't stand. So you have to come into agreement, right? Is that what you're believing for? Because I can tell you that's not what I'm believing for. <laughs> if it's negative, you know what I'm saying? You have to come into agreement. What are you saying about that thing? Are you saying what God says about that thing? What was it that God said to you? What was that assignment that He spoke to you to carry out? <clears throat> Is that what we're professing? What if you've said some things and you went, oh man, I wish I'd never said that. What do you do? Well, you're on a side road, so what do you do? You get off of it. You repent and you get right back on the right road. When you repent, you change your course of direction and you get back in line with God. Your victory is God's plan for your life, but it's totally your choice. It's all up to you. Getting through to the other side is up to you. Keeping your blinders on. Renewing your mind to the Word of God. Being in that place where He can use you and do what He wants to do through you. You see, in each and every person in this room, we're all created differently. 
He put a little piece of himself in each one of us to carry out a certain mission and a plan that he has for us to carry out. And the thing he needs us to do. My assignment isn't your assignment. Sandra can witness to people that would probably never give me the time of day. We all have a sphere of influence of people that surround us. So we all must do our part. Say this with me. Father, Father I, am willing, I am willing. Use me. Use me. I, align I align my words, my words with, your words. with your words. My thoughts, my thoughts with your thoughts. With your thoughts. My, way my way with your ways. With your ways. Let, it Let it be done. To me, to me in me, in me and, through me, and through me. On earth. On earth as it is, is. in heaven. heaven. Amen. 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 You want to experience change in here? It's coming, baby. Be that change. Get out there. If God has done something awesome for you, and He has for each one of you here, or you wouldn't be here, tell somebody. You know, uh, passion is uh, contagious. What you're compassionate about, what you're passionate about. You share that with someone and they're, ooh, ooh. Joyful people make people joyful. Happy people make people happy. Let them see. Hallelujah. <laughs> Your life of victory. And, and speak a word in season to people's hearts and let them know God has a plan for you. And his plan is for your success, for your victory. It's imminent. It's at the door. But the choice to get it is yours. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Pastor.